No. Okay. I think we're good. Let me see. I need to see people come joining. Uh, Here we are. You see us live? I do. Well, right, hello, um, everyone. Hello, hello, everyone. Good to be back. It's been a while. Um, we have an interesting little show for you today. Obviously, some people are missing. We have a familiar face visiting us today. Um, Richard, hello. How are you, man? It's been a few months that we've been off you and david had a quick show but we got so much that we want to talk to people about today that we want to kind of jump in especially our special guest that has everyone everyone's in anticipation of meeting and has the possibility of meeting in the bay area and sacramento is with us today um we have today with us jivan avedisian the, i think uh, yes I think what's up? he may have dropped off for a second but he'll probably okay. be back but um he will be back yes yeah, so jivan avedisian the award-winning director from Artsakh. Um, he is currently on a... Hey, Jivan, what is What is this? What is this? Let's make. Ayo, ayo, I'm in uh, love, love, let's make. Uh, Jivan, I uh, was just making an intro. So this is Jivan Navedisian. Uh, those of you that don't know him, he's a director from Artsakh. He is on a tour in North America currently. A friend of the show, we had him, uh, I don't want to say what, four months, five months ago, Richard, something around something there, like right? That. Um, He's on a North America premiere tour of his feature film, Gate to Heaven. Um, and he's kind of, uh, you know, there. he's uh, uh, currently, Jivan, what do you think about him? What do you think about him? What do Los Angeles, Michel Weiss. Uh, mm. It is a choppy connection, isn't it? It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll make it. Not this is a glitch in the matrix. All right. So um, he's currently in L.A. Um, wrapping up when because Richard and I know the, the 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 ins and outs of what's happening. Uh, obviously, connections bad outside. I believe he's in Glendale currently at right now at a, one of the premieres of his movie Gate uh, Gate Gate to Heaven, uh, uh, and it is going to be also premiering where you are in Sacramento. We're bringing him um, intermittently. Los Angeles, uh, Okay, bad connection. I yeah. want to message him real quick. Um, let's see. Well, at any rate, um, you know, he's he's on tour uh, taking care of the other premieres for his uh, film, but we're going to be hosting a couple premieres up here in Northern California. So next week, starting on Wednesday the 27th, there's going to be a premiere at the uh, Historic Tower Theater in Sacramento, California which is the essentially the birthplace of Tower Records. Uh, and then the next night on Thursday, the 28th, we're going to be at the Elmwood Theater in Berkeley, California. Absolutely. Um, so we've got two movie premieres in Northern California that Armenians from all over Northern California can come and see. Looks like uh, Jivan is back with us. Give us okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so for those of you that are tuning in, we wanted to have, like, it would have been fun to have him kind of come in and uh, do a little uh, ra rapid fire. How's he doing? Jivan, what's your name? I don't know. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Do you have Los Angeles? I think he's frozen again. Okay. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I mean, he told me before. we got to get him a non-satellite phone. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. So I'm gonna go. let's see. Let's uh. Let's. I think there's a way to uh. Maybe. Kick him. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Well, in any event, yes, he's asking how we're doing in terms of the connection. Um, 
շատ լավ, դե հիմա դուք լոս անձերեսում ենք ձեր ձեր ասկ։ Ես եկամ։ Այո, 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 մեկ կներեք կապը կարտես թե շատ լավ չի։ Շատ վատ է, բայց ոչ ինչ, մի 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 կան իրոպեից արդեն մենք կավարտենք էր։ Հիմա լոսում ենք մի ու շապտի դու գալիս եք մեր մոտ, Սակրամենտո և Սանվրանցիսկո, և մենք պտի ծուսանք ձեր էդ վիրմը, Սո այդ մենչն դեր հիլո բի հիր, այս մենչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչնչն
uh, director's uh, journey in North America. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got a friend of mine, Bill Perry, who's in uh, Dallas, Texas, who bought two tickets, uh, who are gifting them to uh, who, who, whoever needs them. So reach out to me. <clears throat> also, Sid, the former uh, manager of the Crest Theater here in Sa Sacramento, uh, has also purchased a couple tickets for the same reason. So we have about four tickets who are up for grabs right now for those um, who want to show up, but maybe they are concerned about being able to afford it. Uh, it's totally understandable. Remember, this is a fundraiser because we want to make sure that Javon's next film, Revival, uh, is finished and completed because, like Greg said, we're, we're trying to amplify as many of the voices of Arasak as possible. Okay. Good luck. Javon, during this premiere, right? Right now. Um, so, Yes, yes, Sima, to Sadrum, a mester, the Imge Gross film, Los Angeles, Gay to Evan and Nineteen, Sireti, Fangutun, Etan, Ditelu, Mus Film Ernel, Tarbe, Community Nere, you might get no mem or at he froze, but I know exactly what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, he's he's showing another film right now and he's about to go in hey. and 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 uh, yeah, and do a QA. Um, at, uh, I believe, the Ararat Center in uh, L.A., somewhere in L.A. Erat, Jivan, shout out to you. L.A., yes, but I'm a great film. Last in Abitent, last in Abitent, Hevanika, you have Tarbek community, you have Tarbek film. You have such a love, 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 uh, yes, he's currently at the Ararat Center in uh, LA showing his second film, which is kind of like not the prede predecessor, but also a different film from uh, called The Last Inhabitant. I have seen all of Jiwan's films. I love him from Tevanik to Last Inhabitant. Um, and uh, he is very, very happy that there is this, this desire to see uh, his films, the different films, because they show different angles of different stories uh, of, of Artsakh. And they will continue showing in different cities all throughout the United States and North America and continue amplifying the story of Artsakh. Jiwan, Shash Noragalink. Spasu Mengzez, Stev. Yes, I am Perem Handi Pink. I am Perem Handi Pink. Okay. 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 Excellent. All right. Yeah, that that's really cool. cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? I, I, I want to bring up something for those of you, for those of you Armenians who said, well, you know, we, we, we just had a movie premiere for another film that came out recently. Uh, another, another director uh, that, that we actually had on the show recently as well. Uh, that that film, Forty Five Days by Emil Gesson, has uh, has been uh, widely received, and uh, we urge you to come and see this one as well because they're different kinds of films. Mm -hmm. Forty Five Days is more of a documentary, a um, little heavy, really good. But this film, uh, it's it's more of a you know what would you say, Greg? It's more of a drama. Yeah, it's it's a, drama. a film. Yeah, it's a drama. It's it's kind of a human situation drama. Like I, I've clearly seen it. I want I don't want to do any spoilers. Right. Rich, maybe we can do the we can uh, we can uh, show uh, the uh, <clears throat> why is that word I'm forgetting the trailer the trailer um, it's an, right right um, it's an amazing movie uh, about uh, people in the diaspora some uh, photojournalists that uh, uh, kind of uh, documented the first Artsakh war and kind of like this uh, the interconnectivity of the past the present the future in an area very close to me. Uh, because I've been there, um, some of you may or gate. First of all, Gateway to Heaven is a place. It's a place in Artsakh, um, uh, and uh, those of you that have been there will recognize it in the movie at some point, right? Okay. Um, We're ready to roll. Yes. Let's. Okay. Uh, let, Three, let, let, two, okay. one. I never knew fear could be a place from which we draw comfort and where we feel most at home. This is our garden, and she's my daughter. I come from a village that lies at the foot of a gorge. Terrible and hunting beauty. The energy there 
is so loaded that I just started to sing. I never knew such a sight could also be the face of pain. It is never <laughs> I wonder if all war photographers are so interested in opera, especially in female parts. Now, he's here with you, right? Yes, it but there is a problem with Martin Sanghenta. My general is not a soldier. This is my home. Now I can be only a soldier. What was your father doing? He was a photographer, just like you, and a very talented one. We were both prisoners of our past, hunted by the same face. And what made you become a war journalist? I saw his talent, and uh, we thought about sending him to cover his first armed conflict in a remote communist country. Who are you? Who are you? Stop this! Because you're a liar. You're a thief. <laughs> In the calmness of that beauty, we find our serenity. Worthy of the gate to heaven. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's just a little snippet of what what the movie's all about. Um, I can't wait to re review it again. Um, I was privileged enough to be sent a little preview. Um, and uh, all of Juwan's movies are amazing. And actually, Richard, you're right. What this is, this is a, this is a, what do you call it? This is a fundraiser, essentially. This premiere is a fundraiser for his fourth film, which is gonna be called Entitled Revival. And we'll talk about it at the Q&A as all of you come and, uh, you know, hang with us and participate in this amazing, amazing two premieres, Sacramento and right. Bay Area and Berkeley on College Avenue. Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, we, we, we often talk about how do we help? How do we, how do we make a difference? And, you know, and we've, we've said on the show multiple times, you know, we're all called to some sort of action one way or another. Sometimes it's political, sometimes it's working endlessly to put on shows like this. By the way, we, 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 we miss David who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, and we're grateful for all the work that he's put into not only these premieres, but it, to Arash Media in general, and we look forward to his uh, return, um, which will be our next episode. Um, but, you know, the, the thing about this is that this is a very inexpensive, cost-effective way for the, the diaspora or anybody, Armenian, non-Armenian, to help an actual Artsakhsi making films about Artsakh in a way that helps elevate the voices so that multiple people can hear about it. Um, and so that's 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 a really noble goal, and I don't I don't it's pretty yeah. easy to do. Very well said, very well said, and also um, well, something that you can do as well, uh, meaning you out there, the ones that are listening right. to us, um, you can share the event page. Um, the links will be posted below. They're already and, posted, and you can you know if you're if you're not coming yourself for whatever reason you can't make it, um, you can be like Richard's uh, friends. You can buy a ticket for somebody else if you'd like. Um, whatever it is, let's fill those seats and let's make sure that these premieres are a success. Um, as well as, you know, you just spoke, unfortunately, you heard in, in snippets uh, uh, with bad connection from Jivan. He's a ter terrific uh, guy to talk to. Um, there will be a Q&A in both premieres in Sacramento and the, the Bay Area following the feature film uh, where you will be able to uh, listen directly from Jivan and uh, ask questions if you're, you have some. And just so you know, if you're planning on being on Armo time, and that is usually a little bit uh, behind the, you know, behind our normal time, I would say please don't. We have we have relatively strict time timelines to be on. We have to vacate theaters a certain time. So, uh, like in Sa Sacramento, it's going to be seven to eight p.m. red carpet, and then an intro. Movie starts at about eight, and the sooner we can get it started, excuse me, the sooner we can get to the Q and A, and you can actually have conversation with it. So. You know, we're going to do our best to keep everything on time um, and, to, and, and so that everybody gets everything out of it. Amazing. Uh, same thing with the Bay Area. The time is a little bit, you know, tight. But, you know, uh, well, look, the armor or not, you know, seven o'clock, you got to be there. The movie starts at some point, And if, you know, <laughs> if you're late, you'll be missing parts of the parts of the film. So please come, right. please support, please be on time and uh, amplify these events. 
um, uh, tell your friends, tell your friends' friends. Um, it's an amazing film. It's an amazing time. Um, I'm blessed that safely we are slowly able to do this even. Uh, months ago, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, yeah. And by the way, another tidbit. This was supposed to be a premiere that would have been done a year ago, right? However, COVID and everything, the war that we endured, uh, postponed everything that Jiwan was doing, obviously, right. for obvious reasons. Um, and uh, now he's kind of trying to uh, usher in the premiere of this movie as a way to bring the communities together of people, right? right. Which is right. great. So right. Richard will be there. I will be there. David will be there. We are urging you to come out. Um, and then, you know, without further ado, we'll continue with the rest of the show. Um, Rich, a little check in. How you been? How's the how's life? What's going on? You good? Man, yeah, mostly good. I mean, mostly good. Uh, on a personal note, you know, I'm I'm back to uh, riding a little bit more. I'm a for those of you who don't know, I'm an endurance cyclist. Every year, I train to do the AIDS Life Cycle Ride, which is a a cycling event that goes from San Francisco to Los Angeles okay. in seven days. It's 550 plus miles uh, around there, 545. Point. Um, and uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of training. We have a fantastic community. And just like many of us, you know, part of my goal is to help help that, that community, but also to raise awareness for our own. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, we're going to need allies. And in order to get allies, you have to be an ally. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm back to playing music. Um, you know, the uh, career front is what it is, doing the best I can. And, um, you know, trying to start my own business soon. So, you know, other than that, just keeping it together. How about you, Greg? What's been going on? You have you've got a lot to talk. Yeah, about. yeah, yeah. There's been there's been a lot. Yeah, thanks thanks for a little check in. As you all know, we had a little show. Uh, Richard and David, I was missing. Uh, had it, I believe, on the 9th of September. But by and large, we in our media have been kind of on a hiatus, right? Um, something we plan to do for a month and a half has been extended to more than that. Um, you know, we'll also bring in. David into the fold, he who has started his executive MBA program. So we've been busy boys, right? Uh, myself, I am in uh, the end of a harvest. Uh, you know, I'm a winemaker, and this year the harvest was, you know, uh, all hands on deck. And where right. I thought where I thought I could probably juggle a little bit of uh, RH Media and other things, I soon figured out that no, it's impossible. But you know, the cool thing is today I finally bottled one of the wines uh something that you know those of you that know me and know our wine company will be able to taste uh in the near future um so it, the, the there was light at the end of the tunnel and with that being said richard david and i will be kind of uh coming back to a much more regularly scheduled uh time frame for all of you that are wondering what's happening with rh media so i guess uh that being said we do have a show uh, a little bit of a kind of an update of what's what was going on Thank you for being interested. Thank you for always tuning in and trying to inform yourself about what is Armenia and what's happening in Armenia and the diaspora at large and the little bits that we can kind of provide as little news items that we uh, sourced and think might be kind of the highlight and the most important items of today uh, regarding Armenia, Artsakh and the diaspora. So right I'm now, just, just to put this in context, Greg, I mean, we've had, there's been a lot of news that's gone on in the past couple months that we've been intermittent at best uh or gone in, in most of it uh but you know you're right we're gonna try and just give you just a handful of news articles right now there are some great people doing some great work in terms of bringing the news uh we're you know of course you know our focus is to bring you the news but also have a uh, good discussion and uh great guests behind it uh what do you want to start with today let's, let's do with the chron chronologically what, are, what what we had the i believe it was the do, 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 do. Azerbaijan yeah. drumming up uh, some. Yes. Yeah. So Azerbaijan is currently the Aliyev in particularly one one of the things regarding the Sunni corridor, right? Remember the horrible, horrible. Uh, uh, I guess let's call it nine points of capitulation, or the ones that you know Pashinyan had to sign or willingly, unwillingly signed at the end of the war, essentially to bring in the so-called peace treaty. The, you know, the, the ceasefire treaty. One of them was this Zangezur or the Sunik corridor, which essentially allows Azerbaijan to have a flyby um, uh, roadway over Sunik. Um, and uh, that has been kind of the last point of what has been agreed <clears throat> upon. And a lot of Armenians are watching in suspense. Is it going to happen or is it not? Aliyev says that there is no way in hell this is not going to happen. Um, 
there well, are parts of Armenian government entities that are kind of pushing back and saying that there is no possibility that this is going to happen. I'm hearing it from a lot, of, lots of different sources in the Armenian government, except for the main one, which is the, the you know, the prime minister himself. So right. um, everybody is skeptical in the diaspora. Those of us that are skeptics, you know, I am a skeptic in terms of who, sure. who, who I think the, the current government uh, is. Um, but here we are. This is this would be a horrible, horrible deal for Armenia, as was everything in the past year. I will say this, although we don't have a link to share, I do recall in the past couple of months, Iran building up uh, some of its forces near the border and, yeah. and basically pushing back and saying, there's not gonna be any change in who is along our side here. That's not gonna happen. And then Aliyev got wound up basically saying, oh, you're doing some provocative stuff. Like, uh, and, the, and the way I registered it was like, oh, so you don't like it when somebody is doing provocative stuff on your border. Gee, now you know how we feel. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes. The, the, the build up towards the problem is, well, you know, kind of Iran woke up in the past few months, the months that Arash Media has been in a, yeah. in a, in a, in a, in a hiatus. Um, but it was actually a, a build up. So there's a north south highway, right? Let's 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 actually bring yeah. up the map, okay. shall we? Yeah. Yeah. OK, so part of the redrawing of these illegal borders that don't mean anything from Soviet times, Thank you, Richard. That, that, where that pinpoint is, it's this town of Rapan, if you can zoom in on that, right? Okay, all right, 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 right. So uh, let's pause right there. Hold on, let's, let's back up a second. For those of you who don't know, uh, this is Armenia proper, obviously. And there, even though most of this is a historical Artsakh, now it's being called Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. And this area over here, Naishivan, uh, was Armenia uh, an Armenian province and was gifted to Azerbaijan? And this is part of the the, the contention, which is that which is all the all the land uh, in both of these areas. And yeah. what they're trying to do, Greg, if I'm if if I'm right, is to yeah. build a corridor between these two lands. Yes, to to essentially like do a land bridge. And uh, the problem that uh, I, again, I'm gonna echo the rhetoric of some of my friends on Instagram saying the problem why everybody in Yerevan is not up in arms around it is because if that corridor gets built, essentially Armenia's independence is being handed over. Why? Because Armenia's southern, there, there will be a land mass. There will be a structure on Armenia's soil that will not uh, uh, adhere to any of Armenia's uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, military, uh, border patrol or anything. There will be a flyby zone, essentially, right? Um, uh, on Armenian soil, cutting off Armenia you know, from Iran. That's actually the, gonna be a tie-in into the story that you just uh, talked about, about Iran building up uh, you know, forces on, uh, on the Azeri border is because what happened was in north of the city of Rapan, the Armenian highway, right? Uh, also something that developed while we were out. Uh, this highway going, yeah, going north of the city of Hapan. You see how it straddles the border over there to the right, to the right, right? Yeah. yeah. Azerbaijan literally cut off that section saying that it's no longer straddling the border. It's essentially in Azerbaijan. Okay. Again, uh, you know, I am a skeptic, but the problem is that this is an arbitrary border that was drawn up in Soviet Union. Okay. And that freeway was always uh, on it, right? And for the longest time, this was Artsakh, so we never had a care for it in being in either direction anywhere, right? And yeah. in reality, those borders are very, very, very arbitrary and therefore from old Soviet maps, okay? So that, 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 that highway on the old Soviet maps sometimes is in Armenia, sometimes it's, you know, in, on, in Mars, okay? And the, the, my, my, my confusion is why is it, why is it? that our government is not standing up and saying, no, that highway is Armenian. And in reality, there is a, they're doing a bypass right now as we speak, Richard. The Armenian government is doing a bypass to that road. Now, the point of contention with Iran and Azerbaijan was happened was, um, it's the next news article link, is um, truck drivers going up thinking that they're going to Russia through Armenia via Georgia, start getting uh, harassed by Azeri border patrolmen. Can you imagine in Armenia? Yeah. 
Um, well, OK, so I want to back up just one second before before you go hard into the pain on that one. I just want to clarify a point. You and I both know why they're not up in arms about this, because they want to get they want to put this whole thing to bed. They want to talk about the tech sector and they want to talk about tourism and, and they want to be done with this whole episode. But you, you can't be done with this episode until there's a fair and equitable solution that doesn't involve more concessions of land. That's all I have and, to say. And, and concessions, I appreciate you said that, is lightly said. These concessions are essentially, for me, an entry point towards the eventual divide, demise of a country. That's I, right. don't know, I don't know of a country other than Armenia, hopefully it won't be the, the case, where there is a flyby uh, freeway crossing, uh, crossing it, 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 uh, a sovereign nation without any customs duties or anything, right? right. Um, I don't know any, any time in history where a foreign entity comes in and starts sectioning off a portion of the highway without any pushback from the local, local government, you know? That's crazy. Um, so that is what I'm trying to say. That is what you're saying as well, is like right. these, 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 you know, these, uh, these secessions are actually the beginnings of, uh, of, of, of a lot of bad stuff. And actually uh, we can, you know, we can-, we can Because we both know that, 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 that the Azeris and the Turks are not going to be satisfied with uh, just another few yards. It's gonna, they, they have already made it very clear that it's the whole deal, period. And it's just yeah. a question of time for them. So, um, yeah, I, so, I don't understand why there, there's just this complicity. I just don't absolutely. get it. Absolutely. So, to your, to your let, yeah. let's get to your point on the, uh, on the, on the, the truck driver situation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, the Azaria Iran relations strained over truck driver arrests. Uh, essentially, a truck driver is driving on the Gogori Sisian Highway, um, thinking that he's in Armenia proper, gets stopped by, uh, what do you call it, by, by uh, Azeri border guards saying that you are entering Azerbaijan. Now you need to be levied a tax to pass, right? The guy doesn't pay it, gets arrested. Um, now this is an older news article, September 28th. Today I read that, that that truck driver has been released. But bottom line is Iran finally understood on, you know, without any of Armenia's uh, uh, flagging to Iran, which is again another point of contention for me and perplexity. I'm not understanding why that's happening. Iran itself understands as hey, 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 if I don't like start ratcheting up the 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 conversation with Baku, um, I'm gonna lose uh, Armenia on my northern border. You know what I mean? And uh, at you know, it's uh, next time I need to you know get my uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, my goods from one area to another. I'm gonna I'll be me. dealing only with Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan, by the way, very, very cozy to Israel. It's, it's happening left and right. Uh, the, the, there are no more uh, and no more an active embassy than the Israeli embassy in Azerbaijan. Which, by the way, brings me to a point that I'm not going to make a whole lot of friends over. Yeah. Which is the reason Armenia isn't getting help. Because Armenia is friends with Iran. And Turkey and Azerbaijan are, are at least, you know, some in some tacit version of friendship with Israel. And so what they're trying to do is say, well, you know what, if Israel can keep good relations with these with, with these Muslim type type countries, uh, we're going to support that. That's that is a reason that Armenia is not getting out. That is I wouldn't say the only, but it certainly is a reason. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate that point, but uh, we can dive into that. And maybe like we'll do a special on that. Invite right. some people that have some some deeper knowledge on it. But I do see what you're saying, and I and I agree with you. And for those of you who are going to call that anti-Semitic, I'm going to call BS. That is not yeah, true. Yeah, it's yeah, just the yeah. geopolitical landscape. Absolutely, absolutely not. So, anyways, um, yeah, and there was a there was a lot of tension that we saw. A lot of kind of uh, you know uh, uh, there was a, a full on. Uh, a, military exercises that Azerbaijan, uh, Iran held on Azeri borders, which is very interesting because there was a, a, an issue of, you know, was it, what's, what's that, sorry, pot kettle black, where Baku is like, hey, why are you bringing uh, uh, military to our borders and uh, starting yeah. staging, staging uh, military exercises when all of the summer we've seen them and Turkey do that on Nahichevan and For sure. on, on the eastern and western border without any uh, concern of any other nation around there, except for Armenia. Um, anyways, but in case we forget as Armenians and think that there might be a future with the people of, with the republics of Turkey and Azerbaijan, let's go to our next uh, uh, news article about the uh, gruesome incident that happened with the farmer in Artsakh. 
uh, just a few days ago, like uh, over a week ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Azeri's kill Armenian soldier, torture Artsakh farmer, and continue to set fields on fire. So this article actually, <laughs> I'm happy that we linked this. It summarizes three different incidents. One incident that I want to mention is the the so the burning of the of the uh, of the what do you call it of the Yerashk village, but that we have a separate link for that. But there's also the the killing of an Artsakh uh, farmer. And something that I learned uh, when I dug deeper is there's a crazier story there, and this is even even worse. Um, so the idea is this: the man was uh, tending to his pomegranate trees. And uh, an Azeri soldier literally sniped him, okay? Just killed him, one, two shot, murder, done. However, the idea, the, the, the story that we think we see here uh, is just a person on the front line and, and uh, the, you know, uh, there's a, it's a conflict zone. What happened was the farmer knew that he is in, uh, in, 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 in a front line zone now, right? Um, and a Russian peacekeeper actually escorted him thinking confidently that nothing is going to happen. So that person was murdered with a Russian peacekeeper, not only a few feet away from him. As a matter of fact, at some point he was riding with him in the tractor, okay? So that lets you understand who we're dealing with. Not, not unlike, uh, you know, as if we as Armenians did not know who these people are, right? Mm -hmm. For centuries and centuries and massacres and massacres. And now we're somehow going to, you know, unblock, what is it called? Unblock the, uh, 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 what do you call it? the uh, the, the the regional uh, economic uh, blockages, as they're calling that, right? Um, via can you trade. imagine if there were if there was just unfettered access by these people into the heart of of what's left of the Armenian province? Yeah, yeah. I I, I shudder to think what would happen. Yes. So that is a, a news item. Uh, rest in peace to that individual who, you know, we hope to seek, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, justice. Um, however it will come, we don't know, but we will not speculate on that um, at the at the moment. Um, okay. here's, that, here's that other article. Another article. This is now like if, if you're, you know, if you understand how you, you can picture Armenia, that was in Artsakh, Eastern flank. This is like, uh, closer to the border of Turkey, but near uh, Nakhichevan. Um, this is another part of that nine, nine points of the capitulation in November, right? This Yerash village is something that Azerbaijan essentially is saying is a little dot inside of near, in, in, on the border near, near Armenia, and is essentially treating it as its own territory, um, and thus uh, constantly, constantly shelling this border village. Again, back to your conversation about, you know, technology and emerging Armenian industries. I'm a winemaker. I know exactly where that village is. That village behind it are vineyards. And it is on the way to a very, very important Armenian uh, wine country called, uh, what do you call it, Areni wine region in Bayodzo, okay? Not, not just a very important Ar Armenian uh, yeah. wine, the, yeah, yeah. the birthplace of wine itself. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. So, like this unraveling and and the idea that sometimes I I, I face with the you know diasporans talking about things as if you know, um, you know this is just you know the daily occurrence. Like I will always be uh, enraged and I will always be infuriated and I will always be uh, concerned. And and something needs to be done. And our, our military needs to start stepping up. So with that said, I want to I want to I want to bring us back to the map real quick. Mm -hmm. So I, it's important that we that we point out a couple of things here. Mm -hmm. This is where Arani is. Yeah. And this is where Turkey is, and and this is this little section that the right there is Yerash, right there you can see yeah yeah right. So, so this is that little plot of land that the uh, Iranians um, unwittingly, uh, well, they, they sold it without knowing exactly, or, or I don't know, I, I can't speculate that. They, let's just stop by saying they sold it to them. Yeah, in the uh, 1920s, the, in the 1920s, Turkey understood that it's two kilometers short of having land connection to the Soviet enclave of Azerbaijan, right? 
understanding that Turks always play the long game, man. They always play the long game. In the 1920s, they knew that they had to purchase that piece of land. And Iran thought, whatever, a couple of kilometers, who cares? Um, and uh, now they have a co direct connection to Nakhichevan and they're staging all of their uh, uh, supply routes to uh, Nakhichevan via you know, Turkish military through that route. This yeah. corridor yeah. here, yeah. Which and is, then they're shelling this, uh, this yeah. area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, anyways, so. Anyway. Now, you know, doom and gloom, sorry folks, this is happening right now. This is happening today, yesterday, a week ago, and we need to be aware of that because otherwise, I don't know. Uh, it was just brought to our attention. It was sold in 1932, uh, but uh, clearly they were having the discussion uh, earlier than 1932, but you're right. Thank you. Um, we stand corrected, yes. Um, but, you know, folks don't know, but how strategic was that? How, 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 forward thinking was that you know what i mean um knowing that someday the soviet union is going to collapse or whatever and that they need a land connection to their to their turkish cousins in azerbaijan right um well i mean you know again you know there, there's 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 things that we need to pay attention to that are of immediate concern and then there are things that we might be able to affect and then there's things that we should at least know that are happening um, and I try to look at the life in, in those three primary areas. Like, what do I have direct control over? What can I influence? And then what do I need to know about and pay attention to? Um, and if you can widen your circles, um, all the better, because uh, that means you've got a better handle on things. And these are the kind, and that's part of the reason that we're bringing this information to you. So as best we can, so that you know a little bit more and you can uh, maybe affect some change one way or another. Speaking about affecting change, it looks like there's some questions uh, for the Pashinian administration uh, when it comes yeah. to what's happening with local elections. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There was a little bit of a realignment, as I would say, a little bit of a light at the end of this, uh, you know, uncomfortable tunnel, um, where uh, three, maybe four, I believe three of that that I know of, uh, regional major towns, cities uh, in in Armenia have. Uh, had mayoral uh, elections. Now, these are not parliamentary elections. These are not gubernatorial elections. These are mayoral elections, but nevertheless, it's the elections of the uh, leaders of these cities of Meri, Gyumri, being the second city uh, of, uh, of Armenia after Yerevan, and uh, uh, Goris. Those uh, three cities elected uh, non Pashinyan uh, politicians uh, running against the civil contract party, which, which is a sign of kind of a, a, I don't know, a pushback from the local populace, a, a, a report card onto what's going on, uh, a worrisome. Uh, the, the, the person that I've particularly uh, been following is the, uh, the mayor of Goris, who was during the revolution, uh, a supporter of, of Pashinyan, as many of us were, okay, at some point, thinking that there is some kind of an ushering in of change, a need for something, something different and different direction, but soon enough, immediately figured out that no, 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 this actually, this guy is not, he, there's something rotten going on here, and post-war started voicing his opinion against him, was I issued an arrest, actually was arrested. I remember when uh, Pashinyan did his uh, rally in Sunik and kind of people came out and, you know, pushed up against him. Um, that was all part of that. Um, so yeah, this, this, this mayor does not have good uh, uh, relations with the prime minister and he won uh, re-election by a landslide. So that says something. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, is it a, is it really you know a statement about Pashinyan or and, or or is it? I, I don't know, but um, I'd like to think that there's change in the air. I mean, obviously, you know, we're we're here, and we do you know have a form of pr privilege, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of of uh, Armenians around the world, either in the diaspora or even the ones uh, who are in Armenia, who are going to say, well, you know, you don't know what's going on out here, and and we. We, we know what we know based on what, what, what we're seeing and how much information we can get. I don't know if it's really, you know, a report card on it, but it sounds like it. And I, and I want to go back to one, one, one thing you did say, uh, you know, who I can, I can think of very few Armenians who weren't really, really proud of the way that the country mm -hmm. changed governments. The Velvet Revolution, as it was called, was heralded by so many of us as, as, a, as a way of, like, 
not one shot was fired. No one was killed. Like we completely changed the, the face of this government uh, to usher in a new era of democracy. The problem was, is well, what happened afterwards and, and maybe some of his alignments that we're not entirely aware of. And I'm sure some of us have caught, caught some heat for some of the what we've said. Um, I, I don't, how do I put this? Uh, I want to think the best of the government. And I'd like to think the best of the president or the, 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 the prime minister um, or any president. But, but um, you know, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. And the policies and the lack of uh, pushback on some of what's happening is astounding to me. So it leads me to believe that there's more going on than we're aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a few items that we, yeah, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I totally agree with you, man. Um, it's concerning uh, to me. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a positive because also, you know, in any democracy, I, there needs to be a, a kind of a, 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 you know, a separation of power and the fact that you know he's not, you know, there isn't a monopoly on everything that he 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 does. Hopefully, you know these mayoral shifts and in tides are going to usher in a new direction and i will be very happy when that happens because the report card on this prime minister is atrocious at best um let's uh, let's move on to something else and richard i will implore us to kind of talk about it in not the most uh, you know damaging way but nonetheless this is something i've heard through the years we're talking about the uh, the, the armenian report something that uh, uh, Anna Kachikian uh, reported on. Um, let's, let's, let's go through it. Let's, what, what, what was it? Recently, the, if the, those of you that don't follow the Armenian report, a great uh, a source uh, uh, headed up by Anna Kachikian. Uh, she's doing an amazing job of trying to kind of bring, you know, uh, news items. And then sometimes she does a deep dive on exclusive interviews. And this one caught my attention because... Uh, Rich, go for it. You'll, you'll, you'll intro. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I just find it really not just embarrassing, but infuriating when I, when I see and hear of reports of corruption and theft within the government, especially for, by, you know, w- w- when it's, uh, in this case, we, we, we've had a, an Armenian American businessman, um, who donated millions of dollars worth of uh, equipment um, and it, medical equipment specifically to Armenia. Uh, and it's been sold by the Armenia's former defense minister yeah. and who pocketed the money himself. And it's, it is embarrassing and in, infuriating because it's things like this. And, and you know, I, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but, you know, you, you get an idea what, what's happening. I'll just let this roll and you can... Uh, take a look at it while we're, we're, we're speaking. But the idea here is that so many of us rally together to try and support the cause and then have to have other people undercut it. Um, it's embarrassing. It makes me not want to reach out to my friends. It makes me not want to, um, you know, have the discussion because it is embarrassing and infuriating at the same time. Um, it, it, yeah. it's, the, the link is here. You can go through the whole eight minute uh, article yourself yeah. Um, and again, Anna Kachikian is doing fantastic work, and I applaud her and her team. Uh, and I look forward to the day yeah, where Armenian American, um, yeah, and the Armenian American and the Armenian can connect. Help, but it's, know, it's, it's, this is this is the kind of uh, thing that makes it really embarrassing. Many, many to um, what I want to add to that is obviously this is not. Uh, I've re- I've, 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 uh, when I saw the report, I was like, mm, I don't, it wasn't like, oh my god. For me, it was like, here we go again. Um, some of the things that I noticed during the war, right, which immediately for people that go like, Greg, you're such a skeptic when it comes to this administration. Some things were not adding up to me. For example, we saw an amazing display on the Armenia's Independence Day of the, the drones that were flying in display of the many of Armenia's milestones just a, just a month ago. And when the war was happening, what was the one thing that were, the diaspora was asked for? we needed to send drones to the front line so that the soldiers have an, uh, the ability to uh, have a, what do you call it, reconnaissance uh, uh, surveillance equipment, right? So you either have it or you don't have it. That's number one. Number two, I'll get to this, I'll connect to this story. 
getting those items into Armenia during the war when you would think all channels of aid would be open. No, it's still, there were stories of, hey, why didn't such and such thing get to the place that it needed to go to the front lines? Oh, it's stuck in customs in Yerevan airport. Oh, why didn't that piece of equipment well, uh, that we urgently needed while there's like active fire, right? Uh, get to the, well, believe it or not, our guys, literally quotes from people, our guys showed up there, said, hey, we're here to, to receive this, uh, these donations. And then the customs said, so customs to me and the customs issues uh, don't happen at a time of uh, a war. You know, at a time of war, you, you clear things to get to where they need to get so that we win the war cause, right? So to now hear this, it's to me, it's like a wider systemic issue that we have as Armenians in Armenia, where Armenia oftentimes is being utilized as some kind of a laundromat, as a, uh, this is, you know, now I'm the minister of XYZ, and I have the ability to kind of usher in uh, uh, such and such favors and uh, take in things that come in from abroad, where here is an example of a guy who is very influential. I want to research who this guy is, but based on the amount of uh, you know, uh, 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 items that he was able to donate. And these are very, th th these were things like x-ray machines, you know what I mean? Like, uh, um, uh, uh, don't quote me on some of these chambers that he's talking about. He literally, the reason why he figured out that it was being stolen is because he was asking, oh, uh, the idea was just like anything, any kind of scheme. Initially, the first batches go through and the doctors say we got him. And then the next batches go through. But then at some point, you send, you send in like the big guns or like the bigger items, like the x-ray machines. And all of a sudden, someone says, hey, man, I don't know where those machines are. You know what I mean? And the ministry says, we don't know. And then you start getting bounced around. And next thing you know, you're a guy that donated millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of equipment. But you're getting the email runaround of sorry, you know, you know. That is not a mistake. That is systemic. That is a uh, it's it's it is, yeah, and it is colossally disrespectful, and it is it is it is offensive on so many levels. I, I just don't even have the words to describe the level of betrayal that that is. And I don't want to sound heavy-handed here, but let me just put this in the right context. We have a very young, modern country that is very close to being sold off, essentially, or given away for effectively nothing. And you have young men and women who are on the front lines fighting to try and keep that dream of a country alive. And then you have other people who are part of the government who are sending them out to do that while they're taking the only relief efforts that have been coming in from all over the world to make money off of. So people like you and I and David and many of our supporters are out there pounding the pavement, drumming up support and saying, you have to come to this event. You have to put money into this. You have to do everything you can to help save this fledgling nation. And then you have other people who are effectively vultures and who are taking from that. That I find unforgivable and totally offensive. And there isn't an Armenian within an earshot of this broadcast and beyond who who shouldn't be incensed by this. You yeah. should be enraged by stuff like this because yeah. they are literally taking the future that our ancestors perished for and they're, and they're taking what's left of the potential future. And I have to say that, that you, know, you know, going back to the Israel discussion, I, I, I wanted to mention something about this because I've been thinking about this a lot and I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I will say that, you know, the difference between the Armenians and the Israelis throughout throughout the, the, this, this modern history is that, you know, Israel's a fortress. And the reason that you can party in Tel Aviv and be in a bikini and be on the coast and, and, and go to a club is because there's, there is a wall of iron surrounding that country and everyone has got to be part of the military. Absolutely. And, and, and what have the Armenians been doing for 30 years? Yeah. And if it, if it's things like this, Selling off the equipment that people are donating to them? So m the reason why I said I completely agree with you, the reason why I said we want to approach it uh, uh, cautiously is this. What the man says towards the end of the interview is something that really damages me. He says, I don't want to uh, donate to Armenia and I don't want to visit Armenia, okay? I don't encourage that. What I do encourage is that we understand that 
we need systemic change in our right. region. We need change. Uh, Absolutely. Look, Richard, uh, I am not of the kind of person that says, oh, Armenians are the best people in the world and we are the brightest, brightest, best. In no, 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 I get that. Um, but what will kind of usher in the new change is if there are laws, enforceable laws, that the next time another minister comes into place and sees that the minister before him is in jail for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that. Yeah, for he'll sure. Think, he'll think twice about uh, trying it, to do this. It's not just a... a having laws it's a culture of of accountability in place that's the bigger deal because you could put a million laws on the books and nobody's going to follow it's about a culture of accountability and i I only know this from some of my involvement in uh in in the workforce and in the positions that i've held it is all about accountability and about and and holding people uh to atone for what they've done that's that's the way to i mean that's the basic way to do it I, i suppose we could go all night um and and one of our uh, <clears throat> one of our comments was that this is about government incompetence, chaos, and misfunction. And, uh, and 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 I agree. And I think the the uh, the antidote to that is integrity and holding people accountable. That's that is the way that you counteract and you right the ship. That's the only way to do it is to have people with integrity who are going to follow through and hold people accountable. The, and here's the other thing that I'll say: um, Armenians have to get used to the idea of planting trees that knowing we will never get to sit in the shade because if we expect to get immediate results for every one of our actions we're going to lose every time you know the things that i do and you do here are for the betterment of the the next generation and the one beyond like i i I don't i don't expect to get any accolades out of this you know what i'm saying because It's not about that. We're trying to move the ball forward. And I wish I wish other people were doing that too, which is part of Arach Media. Okay, so we've got we've got um at least one other article, two other um yeah, one other article that um and then we can sign off. And this is a this is a pretty good one because this is this is pretty awesome. Yes, of course, you know, as as I said, Armenians are not the most exceptional. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is like I don't always like to cook, you know polish our image because we're you know we're fallible and yet this is a this is an amazing amazing achievement by an armenian uh much like a lot of armenians that have done amazing amazing work um the nobel peace prize has been awarded uh to two americans medicine one, prize uh what medicine yeah yeah, yeah. nobel and, medicine prize uh, and work on heat and touch i'll be honest with you i should brush up about what it is i've heard people in the academia and in the scientific world say that apparently the discovery is quite uh, uh, enormous and that might change a lot of things the way that we do. Uh, one of the recipients is a none other than um, a gentleman who was born in Lebanon to Armenian parents. Richard, what is the, I, I think the, the last name was Tapatulian. Um, it's not a, not a popular Armenian last name, but mm-hmm. here, well, let me see here. It is, yes, uh, uh, Pataputian. Um, who was awarded with with uh, with another gentleman, uh, Mr. Julius? Uh, they both won the uh, the Nobel Prize for in the in the in the realm of medicine. So that's amazing. Um, yeah, he is on the right. No, not him. Make a right, right. There that, we go. That's the gentleman, right? So Professor Ardem Pataputian. Okay, that's the name. Um, and I know that some people mentioned that hey. Hey, I, I know where he's from. Uh, he's from Lebanon. Um, and I think he went to, 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 to school in Lebanon and then immigrated to the United States. So anyways, congratulations. Wanted to leave you off on something positive. Um, let's wrap up by kind of yeah. revisiting what we are doing next week. Um, we are hosting the premiere of an incredible, incredible director, somebody that slowly already is becoming a friend of the show, definitely hopefully a friend of ours personally. Right. Um, and we have two true events, one in Sacramento, your hometown. One Wednesday the 27th. Wednesday and 27th at 7 p.m. Please, in the Facebook, there, there, there are links to the Facebook event pages. Um, uh, there you can find out how you can purchase tickets. One is to the theater in, in, in Berkeley and the other one is an Eventbrite page. Uh, that will allow you to give you the possibility of purchasing tickets to the Tower Theater in 
uh, Sacramento, which is the first of the two premieres. Uh, we really, really need everybody there. Richard, back to you. Yeah. So again, Wednesday the 27th, the Tower Theater, Sacramento, California. Uh, Thursday the 28th at the Elmwood Theater in Berkeley, California. Um, if you follow the links, you'll be able to purchase tickets and they'll, they'll be available digitally and you can show up with them. Uh, we'll take care of you once, when, once you get in. There's food and beverages available. Obviously, it is uh, often theater food, uh, which is not, which is, which is, which is good. Uh, I may suggest. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, um, uh, but, oh, in Sacramento, it's just, a, it's literally right off the freeway and there's plenty of parking. Uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous uh, area to be in. Uh, it's a landmark theater, um, and you know. So please, please come. Uh, we're gonna all three of us, David, Greg, and myself, are gonna be at both premieres. Um, not that we're worth meeting or anything, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, and uh, there will be community uh, leaders there, uh, Q and A, uh, following the the show, and uh, kind of want to reiterate Jivan's desire of why you should come to this event, is you want to hear the stories of Artsakh and come united as a, as, as a community. So every Armenian of all walks of life, please, please purchase your ticket. Come on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Tower Theater in Sacramento. Thursday, 7 p.m. Elmwood Theater on College Avenue in Berkeley. It's pretty much North Oakland, South Berkeley. Okay, um, so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, you know, for the longest time, I thought that's Oakland, but it's literally Oakland a few blocks away. So right. that's where it is. Bay Area premiere and the Sacramento premieres. We will see you there. Hope to see everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Great to see you, Greg. We look forward to David, your your return. Uh, stay tuned uh, on Autoch Media, not only on the Facebook page, but also uh, you can rewatch this uh, on our YouTube channel. The links I put up on the Autoch Media link tree, which David was kind enough to put together, which has a list of many links that we've had uh, over, over the months. Um, so we're, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you Wednesday and or Thursday and looking forward to seeing you and our uh, co-host and uh, you know co-creator in uh, in person uh wednesday thursday and until then uh have a great evening everyone <laughs>